Hi, Deb. Can you hear me? Hello? Deb, at the bottom, there's a little place that you can click to. Oh, can you hear me now, Deb? Yep, I got you. Yeah, and then if you do want to run your video, it's down there probably at the bottom. It's well, really, it's up to I, you. I saw that. I didn't realize that was an option. You can. It's certainly not required. So I think well, it's good because I just got off the Narda track. I totally get it. Then you. you now, if I, now that I know, I, I would have done yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> Right, and I think especially when you go to do yours here in January, it'll be important that they can see your face, right? Oh yeah, I'll do. I'll be doing mine um, from my classroom, actually. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Because I don't trust uh, our Wi-Fi here. I get it. I get in it. the winter, especially. Yeah. <laughs> so did all your? You had bunches of guests that you weren't sure whether or not they were going to. They were not gone last week at this time. Is that right? <sighs> Well, we, I had them for a week. We, they were, um, my husband was four hours away from being done with harvesting the wheat and broke down. So oh, no. Suppose, actually, a, the, um, has to get a new wheel <laughs> so, oh. for him. So that was a major deal. So that was supposed to be in this morning. It didn't come. So hopefully tomorrow, because he literally has four hours, probably. Wow. That's unfortunate. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. but they had to leave so <laughs> let's hope they get it let's hope they get it all under control and we can get that figured out hey um can you see me on the screen um yeah just little how do i make you bigger though well you can right above where that picture is you can hit, you can hit the options sizes if you want yeah so okay. it's really up to you what you want to do um I think probably your best bet will be, and I can run you through it, like about a week or so before you're going to do this, we just do a test and have you kind of experiment with a little bit. And I and uh, Tina, um, our wonderful tech person, uh, also told me that she would sit with me and work through it too. Nice. So she'll probably sit down and you know help Perfect. me figure stuff out. And you probably don't even need me to to be involved. I know uh, what they did with me is they just shared uh, username and password, so I could go into Zoom, and I could just start the meeting and and run it. So um, it's it takes a little practice, but uh, you know it. That's what I'm gonna ask. Good. Yeah, that's who I'm gonna have her meet with me for a semester, so I have plenty of time. Yep. Yep. No worries. Um, and it will automatically record it and put it on the cloud in Zoom. So you won't have to worry oh. about any of that. Um, it just takes care of it. So mm -hmm. no worries. One of the things I've never done before is down at the bottom, I had to mar manage participants. So I had to click on that and I had to tell it to allow you to come in. So that's one okay. thing I normally don't do. Usually it's just as soon as you hit the URL link to join the Zoom, it just brings you automatically in, right? But here you have to... Um, kind of approve people to join you. So, okay. Yeah. So, like I said, um, there aren't a lot of things to do. You just basically got to hit the start button to start the meeting and then approve people to come in. So, it's, okay. it's, pretty, it's pretty simple. Yeah. I'm not too worried. Nope. Tina's really good at that. So. Good. Good. And when do you go back to school? Um... The 15th. You don't return till the 15th. August 15th. Okay. Teachers. And then uh, I think that's, what is that, a Thursday? Mm -hmm. Then we have kids Monday. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you just get two days before you have kids. Yes. We do have one um, not required, but a speaker coming in August 6th. He wrote the book Focus and some others that our administration's big on. <laughs> so... I didn't get a lot out of the book, but yep, understood. In fact, I highlighted some of the things I thought were derogatory to a little bit towards art. So oh dear, oh dear. I don't know. I might have misread it, you know. Yeah. Oh, certainly, and it's probably worth the reread just to make sure. Now, what, what just popped up on my screen is okay. one person is waiting, so I'm going to admit Rebecca into the okay. Room. So 
So that's how that works. Okay, I see. Hi, Rebecca. Now Rebecca's brave. Hi, you're not seeing me because I just got off the Narda track. Sorry. <laughs> if I had known that option. <laughs> Now, I don't know if your speaker is going, uh, Rebecca, your audio, because I don't see an icon for you. So usually you can go to the bottom and there might be a place there where you can tell it to use your built-in output, built-in microphone. So we won't be able to hear, Rebecca can hear us, but we won't be able to hear her. So in that instance, De uh, Deb, there okay. is a chat box, a chat too, um, that people can communicate through that as well. So if it's somebody like Rebecca where her audio is not working, okay. you can have the chat up. Um, and it's just under, I just hit the more button down at the bottom. You'll see all the different things at the bottom when mm -hmm. it's time to do that, so. Okay. So she be chatting. Yeah. So Rebecca may throw some things on there. Well, that's good for me to know. I thought that was the only option. I didn't realize that nope. that attendees would have a video and Zoom gives you lots and lots of options. So you okay, can good. Audio, video, chat. It just gives you lots and lots. And you'll know how many are registered and who is registered actually. Um, so you do that through the through the app that uh, when I logged in. So um, Rebecca, are you looking for your chat? Oh, your icon came up for your audio. <laughs> well, we'll let her work on that. That's not a problem. So one of the things, Deb, you'll just have to do is kind of watch down here at the bottom. You know, right now, I know there's only three of us on here, so I'm watching that number to see if it changes to four. And then I click on that and add that person. Okay. Because people may come on after you get started, so you're just going to kind of want to be aware of it. Sure. And, and add them in so they're not sitting out there waiting kind of thing. You know, this is a pilot. So if we find that maybe registering is more work than what it needs to be, maybe we just share the uh, URL for people to just join. Um, that's always an option too. But uh, Jody wanted to try people registering first to see how that works. So I think I just give her some input, Jody and Josie, some input as to how that works. So, all right. Well, I think we'll just kind of go through the motions here and, and share. And um, th as I said, this is going to be recorded. So that way we can put it uh, somewhere for people to uh, access if they want to review it later. Um, and interestingly, I was asked to go to Arkansas to be their keynote at the beginning of November. And so I'd already done this. And then their, the keynote is about being professional advocator and uh, a leader um, for their awesome. organization. So I was able to take this information and transfer it over. So it worked out beautifully. Um, I'm probably speaking to the choir here with you too, because I think you know a lot of this, but we'll just go through it. Feel free to ask questions and, and we'll walk through. Uh, so right. I'm with her. Uh, Currently, I'm the membership chair, co-membership chair, as well as social media uh, person for N NATA. And I'm also a few months out from uh, ending my uh, term as the NAEA Western Region Vice President. That will end at the end of the convention in Minneapolis at the end of March. So I want to welcome you to what do NATA and NEA do for me? And we're going to be looking through lenses of those six things that are listed there on, on the screen. Here are things that I would like to see us um, get done for tonight as we're going through. Um, first of all, understand that each of you or know that each of you uh, who are joining us on the call is a professional, an advocator, and a leader in art education that can take many, many different uh, looks and views. Um, but e each of you are this at some point in somewhere um, in terms of your career in art education. Understand how the three C's of communication, collaboration, and community impacts you as an art educator, especially when it comes to your membership with NAEA and NATA. And finally, be able to identify how we can better support you as a member and a leader in art education. So if you can walk away having thought about those three things, we will be 
having a, a good time tonight and, and help you uh, move along in your journey. Um, so we are going to have you share your name, your state. We're both, all three from Nebraska, so that makes it easier, easy. Uh -huh. a leadership role and one word to describe why you belong to NAEA, NATA. Just one word. So I'll give you a second to think about why you belong in one word. So I'll begin. Uh, Bob Reeker from Nebraska. Already mentioned my leadership roles. And my one word would be collegiality. <laughs> Deb, would you like to go next? Well, that was a big word. That is is that, yeah, that's my that's um, my eighth grade word. Well, let's see. I'm having a hard time thinking of my one word that means collaboration. I didn't want to use that word. <laughs> people. It, it's it, it's it, the it's the knowing the people. Yeah, I guess yeah. people. We'll accept a little mini phrase too. It doesn't have to just be a single word. <laughs> but you're right. Yeah, the, those interactions. I'll, you have, those I'll just say it's the people. Yep. Yep. That works. And your current role with NATA is what? Western liaison. Very good. What? Yeah. Yeah. So you're overseeing ESUs all there on the west side of the of the state. Yeah, and uh, and even one without an ESU. So. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, understood. But I think Rebecca's really worked her fanny off to try to get. She has. All over the state. It's remarkable. I think this is the first time I can remember in lots of years where we don't have nearly as many openings. So, Rebecca, are you able to share anything either in the chat or on a piece of paper? Or <laughs> there should be a place where you can click at the bottom or somewhere where it says chat. I don't know if you see a spot where it says chat. Deb, do you see that on your screen? I no, I do not on mine. You have a more button. Now it came up. Okay. Um, mine is under the more button. Mine just popped up when you, sh when you had it, when you hit it, apparently it showed. Did it show? Yeah. Oh, bam. Uh, now, Bob, are you the third participant? Cause it is. Okay. Yeah. Yep. The, the leader is also included as, uh, as that. So, so I'm seeing mine is popping up. It says chat. I see that. Right, there we go. There she goes. Very good. That seems to be a good word. <laughs> right? I mean, I, I think that I think that's an outstanding word. Even my word collegiality also connects to people really well too, mm -hmm. right? We belong because we have that interconnectedness, that same vision, that same mission as other people that are in the organization. So good word, both of you. So these are kind of the areas that we're going to take a look at tonight as we're uh, visiting. Um, the professional piece is really, um, I felt, fell, fell under the, the strategic piece of learning. Um, and if you're familiar with all the strategic learning initiatives, a lot of these tend to overlap one another, but the one about being a professional learner is kind of a key one that stood out to me. As an advocator, of course, advocacy. Um, as a leader, that's organizational vibrancy. How do we make sure that the organization is as vibrant as possible? And then those three C's of communication, collaboration, and community can follow under each one of those. So we're just gonna kind of explore each of those as we go through. First of all, you are a professional. And under uh, the era of communication, we of course have this amazing website um, that Bill Cavill, our current co-president um, elect, runs for us and has all the information uh, that you might need. If, I think if we had other people on here, I would pr probably click on that link to show it, but I think you probably are both pretty familiar. I will click on other links but that uh, certainly is a, our, a, usually our go-to place when you're trying to find information, especially when it comes to our, um, like our fall conference that's coming up or any of our learning opportunities. And then Jody and Josie, our co-presidents, do a beautiful job of sharing information through the Heartland Happenings. And those come out periodically um, for you to, in order to keep you updated as to things uh, that are going on. Um, so it's important that as professionals that we seek out, we're aware of those communication pieces as part of our NATA organization. But then under NAEA, um, have you both been to the arteducators.org website? Yes. Yeah, there, there's probably more than any of us could probably use in a lifetime, but wow, is it an incredible amount of information. In fact, this website has won multiple awards um, from different organizations from around the country. 
And uh, it's just chock full of uh, incredible information that is valuable um, to, to art educators in a variety of different ways. Um, and it is also kind of organized around those strategic planning initiatives of uh, advocacy and community, I'm sorry, yeah, community uh, learning, research, um, organizational vibrancy. And I think there's even some uh, uh, looking at adding a sixth one, which would be equity, diversity, and inclusion. That really is a huge initiative that um, NA is undertaking. Um, Facebook is also a way to communicate. Um, if you haven't liked their um, National Art Education Association Facebook, Facebook page, you should do that. If you're not part of our Western region, Facebook page, you should consider liking that as well because we keep people updated all the time through um, those Facebook pages. And then um, Deborah Reeve is uh, great about sending out quarterly leadership lenses. Um, and there's so much information on there for you to um, read through and really get a good feel about what it is that this organization is, do organization is doing. Um, if you're not aware, Deborah Reeve is retiring uh, come January. And so uh, we are in the process right now, NAEA, of uh, searching for a new executive director. Um, the call's been put out. There were 50 plus applicants. The uh, search committee has narrowed it down to 17 or 18. And then it's going to get narrowed down to about five to seven, which are then going to be interviewed by a team. Um, and then Lorinda Rice, who is the supervision, supervision and administration division director um, from Lincoln Public Schools, and I will travel. Um, early October to interview the top two candidates and we will hopefully get us a new executive director. So it's exciting times for NAEA and uh, Lorinda and I are very excited to be part of uh, the next step that NAE is going through. Please feel free to ask questions, to interject things. And we also will be watching the chat bar for you, Rebecca, if you decide you want to uh, throw something on there and, and join in the conversation, but don't hesitate to interrupt as we're going through. The next one is collaboration as a professional. Well, right here we are. The new webinar series. Um, as you're aware of, uh, Tyler Hinton will be doing one on accountability in uh, early September, mid-September, September 14th. I think that sounds about right. Mm -hmm. And Deb, yours will be early January, like January 1st. You want to give us, 4th, you want to give us a little idea of what you're going to cover during your webinar? Um. Yes, and I think I'm presenting a basically the same thing this fall. Mm -hmm. oh, that'll be good. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going just to share what I've learned in the last five years of sitting up a tab elementary room. And I'm going to talk about all the issues I had and the solutions I came up with and the fact that doing tab day to day takes creative thinking for the teacher that you wouldn't believe. I'm always coming up with a way to improve things by just watching the kids. It really forces you to watch them. And then, oh, okay. So this year, you know, and, and then I'm going to talk to everyone about how everyone's um, situation is totally different. So you have to take what you can from it, do it your own way to make it work. You know, I always have time issues. And so, I'm going to share how I came up with making my time issues work and I'll share all the ref the reference books I've read and websites and Facebook groups and you have a lot of resources there are a lot of resources out there there and you know and I see on the Facebook groups I see some of the uh, newbies who are, are all excited and they're sitting their room up and they had the pictures full of signings everywhere and stuff and I hated to tell them you know it took me a while to learn to do, to cut down on the signage because the kids just don't read it <laughs> they all look at it do they agreed yeah so <laughs> well, anyway sometimes stuff like that less is more isn't it what was that sometimes less is more yeah and I think yeah. it is and yeah. so Agree. Anyway. Kind of boil it down to what's most important about. But it. I mean, once you see the kids' engagement and how much they love it, um, it's hard to. It is a little bit hard to go back. I also, I'll probably also talk about informing everyone around you what's going on. Very nice. Oh yeah, and that's part of. I that told answer. the teachers, the parent notes went home, and, and I need to do it again. But I did it. I haven't done it for a couple of years. But notes would go home and say, "This is what you can expect." It. Yep. The art looks like it's like children made it, you know, and so right. on. 
Yeah, no, that's target. important. That's keeping all of your stakeholders informed of um, how how things may look different than what maybe they learned art when they were younger. Mm -hmm. So, I, I think so you tell your administration and you tell the fellow teachers that too. Yeah. So. Oh gosh, yeah, everybody needs to be involved in that piece of information. So thank you, Deb. We wish you well okay. with uh, both your fall conference as well as uh, when you present your webinar here in January. We're glad you're here with us tonight. Um, and then ESU Regions, um, you know, Rebecca, who's on board with us tonight, has just, as we mentioned, done a fantastic job of really making sure we have representation across the state. And then, um, you know, just those efforts to try to really create some wonderful learning opportunities, especially those face-to-face. -face. Digital does a lot for us, right? We have lots yeah. of opportunities to do digital, but when we can bring people face-to-face -to -face together, that is a pretty incredible um, experience. So I know we have some really fun things planned um, over the next year or so that are going to be happening in the regions where uh, where people can come together and do things. I think Rebecca probably gets this, but the one thing I'm always it's, it's harder out west is yep. you know like uh, the last thing happening up in Scotts Bluff. It's actually closer for me to drive to Omaha <laughs> than it would be to drive to Scotts Bluff, and a lot really? of people well, don't realize that it's you know it's five six hours up there. Mm -hmm. So we're so spread out that you know that that does make it a challenge so the webinar series would really will be good for western yeah. yeah and i think we continue to offer both right i think that's a key part of yeah. our organization is meeting people where they're at so mm -hmm. for the people that really desire those face to face we could keep offering those kinds of things hoping people come um and then you know doing these online things tonight's not a great example for for bringing people together but we also kind of figured Mm, the topic, the fact that uh, most of us have two to four weeks of vacation left, it may not be at the top of yeah. the it would be yeah. on, a, on a Wednesday evening, but you know, we have to pilot and get started somewhere. So um, Rebecca, thank you for all of your efforts in really trying to collaborate and, and push that learning piece uh, uh, along uh, for people all across the state. So, um, And then for NAEA, if you've not uh, participated in, we have an amazing webinar series that's led by Dennis Inholzen, who is a former NAEA president. He's a former Western Region vice president uh, from Michigan, but is currently living in Indiana. And he is the chief learning officer for NAEA. And he, along with a couple of consultants, put together an amazing webinar, webinar series. If you've seen our Facebook page recently, we actually uh, put up all the different webinars that are being offered in the next year. And I'm very fortunate to be part of one of the first ones on August 21st. Uh, myself, Linda Keeling from the Pacific region and Laura Milas from Chicago, are going to speak on how to bring the national standards to life in your uh, in the different units that you might be teaching. So uh, make sure you check out the, that webinar series. Uh, it's available on the NAEA website as well as uh, you know if you check our Facebook pages, those items are there. And I'll be advertising my webinar so people join. Mm -hmm. Please remember too, these are archived, right? So as a member of NATA NAEA, you can go in, log into your. Uh, into your account and you can watch any number of webinars. I mean, I'm sure we have dozens and dozens by now that are archived and they are free for you as part of your membership. I think that's kind of an unknown to a lot of people. And I think we need to make sure people know you can be sitting in your jammies or have just gotten off the Nordic track there you and go. sit and watch a webinar on your own time, whenever it is that you might have time to do that. So um, I think the more we share that, the, it's important for people to recognize what an important piece of collaboration and being a professional that is. The final one that we're going to talk about under professional is part being part of a community. Wow, do we have a great fall conference coming up in Nebraska City here uh, this fall on the 27th, 28th. And then we head back to Omaha in 2020. You'll remember they kind of, Omaha kind of takes this on every five years, similar to what NAEA does, where they go to New York every five years. So uh, it's kind of been established that we always will go back to Omaha. But Nebraska City is chock full of amazing things. We have Donalyn Heisey, who's gonna be joining us and speaking to us about trauma. She just recently published a book and trauma, uh, uh, people with trauma, and that can be adults and children. It's really a hot topic right now. Yes, and, it is. Yeah, uh, what are your thoughts on that? Deb, do you have anything you want to share? Um, just that trauma and art as therapy is hot right now because, you know, we all know, maybe it's just me, but there's more kids that are having issues, <laughs> little ones even, and the stress level. And, yeah, and so I'm seeing it more. 
yeah, there's no doubts. Um, and even and even if we we do we because we I know I'm not trained as an art therapist. I don't know if you are, Deb, or you do have training no, in art therapy. No. Even if we don't truly use art as a, a, a medical therapy, we certainly can um, tout the the effects that art has just on children being able to express themselves and often sharing pictures what they can't do in words, right? So yes. Donalyn's uh, sharing is going to be a really important one. And then I'm doing a fun session afterwards that fits into this community piece. It's gonna be, it's called a pop-up session. And so we're going to, after Donalyn's uh, keynote, we're gonna ask people to stand up and share a topic that they would love uh, to delve into a little bit deeper for about 45 minutes and just have a conversation. And the idea would be that you would just have a personal discussion with, five, 10, 15 people on a topic of interest. So I think this will be kind of a fun way to maybe bring some things uh, to light. Uh, Rebecca just shared, we can be more aware of what the students are going through and get them to counselors and resources. I agree, that's right. We, as we watch children create, that can often bring up those red flags, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, then we can pass them on to other people who can have those important resources. So I agree, fall conference is gonna be amazing. Um, and then national convention, um, it's lined up for the next three years, uh, Minneapolis this next spring, Chicago the following, and then back to New York in 2022. Um, they are starting to look at 2023, 2024, and they're hoping to go south again. So they're looking at maybe some places in Texas, possibly New Orleans, possibly someplace in Florida. So we'll see. The hard part is when you're looking at anywhere between 3,500 and 7,000 art teachers coming together, there are a lot of pieces and parts that have to fit together, right, in order mm -hmm. to make that, uh, that happen. So that's uh, something that the NAE office takes very seriously and makes sure all the pieces and parts are going to fit together. Just to bounce back to the NATA Fall Conference, we're also doing a really nice, I'm call, I had called it a poster session, but it's more about a wonderings and a noticing sessions. We're going to create a series of posters hanging on the wall, uh, topics that relate to NATA and NAEA, and these will be up the entire conference, and then it'll give the people an opportunity to take sticky notes and ideas and plan them up on the wall on the different topics. For example, one is the webinars that we are hosting, um, just to get feedback. Maybe people okay. will give ideas of topics for the next series after we pilot if we decide to move forward. Uh, and we'll have posters from NAEA about um, equity, diversity, and inclusion, um, the research, uh, the research commission, um, the position statements that have been created. So we're just gonna create, try to create a series of posters that people can respond to like during downtimes and as they transition. So I think that will be um, a nice way that people can give us feedback more informally uh, during kind of some downtimes as people are moving about and going from place to place. Um, the next topic or area that we're gonna kind of take a look at is um, advocator, because we are all advocators in what it is that we do, and whether that's um, in our school, in our district, um, in our community, in our state, across the nation. Um, so the first area is communication. Um, oh, we have an amazing new advocacy director. Um, as you know, Tim um, Bogatz um, resigned uh, just recently, and Shelby Ricks, who was actually a former student teacher of mine, has come on, and she is, she's a fireball. She's uh, been part of our conference calls uh, that we've had in, uh, for the uh, Nebraska City uh, Conference. She has ideas. I just think she really wants to light a fire and uh, make things work. So if you have advocacy needs, um, Shelby would be the one to contact. You could get a hold of Rebecca, a hold of me. We would be happy um, to get you connected to Shelby as she's trying to formulate her agenda and what it is she wants to do uh, for the next year with Josie and Jody at the helm. If we go to NAEA, um, the advocacy tab on the arteducators.org page is really incredible. I will go to that link just so then you can kind of see what that looks like. Um, you, as you can see across the top, we have news, events, advocacy, research is another strategic initiative, learn and learning and tools, uh, community, and then the different opportunities. But if we scroll down, you'll see things like the advocacy toolkit, uh, there's all kinds of resources in there for you uh, to look at to advocate for your program, especially if things are um, being cut in your area. This is going to be a really important one to go to and really um, explore. Um, we have things like the Advocacy Working Group. Um, it's an ongoing uh, president-appointed uh, working group 
uh, that is constantly looking at what it is that we need to be doing across the nation in terms of advocacy. There's those platform and position statements that are so vital that people can pull up and look at. The great thing about these, and I may talk about them later as well, is that they are now searchable as well by topic. So if you uh, go into the search bar at the top and you click on, uh, click in the search box and put position statement and put um, uh, time, you'll be able to find any of the position statements that re might relate to time as we work with students, those kinds of things. The white papers on art education are research-based. Those can be valuable. Um, as we update ESSA, Every Student Succeeds Act, that information is there. So as you can see here, there's just lots and lots of great advocacy tools that can be really helpful for people as they are trying to promote programs um, and really speak to uh, what it is that uh, what art programs can do for kids and why we need to have art for kids K through 12 and beyond, of course. The next part under Advocator is collaboration. Boy, we have some amazing exhibitions that we um, have through um, NATA. Mm -hmm. And I know both of you have participated in these. So again, I'm not telling you anything, um, but really exhibitions are part of advocacy as well. Um, it really shows the power of numbers. And so you recall, we have the Art Educator Show. Were you able to both put pieces in? Well, submitted something I haven't heard yet. Thank you, I meant to say submit. So, and I submitted it. Okay. Well. So it sounds like we had 30 artists submit. So it's That's looking good. good uh, you know, pretty good number. Uh, for people uh, for the for the show. So we should have an amazing show um, down there in Nebraska City. But as you know, the, um, the offerings we have for students are really, really incredible. Um, you'll remember we have the congressional, which is for seventh through 12th grade. That happens every spring. Uh, Debbie Kipley runs that one, as well as Draw Your Dreams. Um, that's the one where uh, students can submit art. I think that one's only K through, K through A, eight, I want to say. Um, I think so. Yeah, images can be uh, submitted. Um, and that happens even earlier now because the uh, National Bank wanted the images sooner. But those children receive a $1,000 uh, scholarship uh, uh, money in order to be able to save that and put that towards uh, college. Um, so that's pretty cool. And then their images go on a calendar. So that's pretty sweet. Uh -huh. Our NASB happens um, in the fall. That's the Nebraska Association of School Boards, um, usually held in Papillion. And uh, every member can submit two pieces. And that is a members only exhibit. So we made it such that uh, if you're a member, you can submit. If you're a non-member, then that's not one that's available. And what a powerful um, advocating tool, right? This idea that not school boards, but administrators walk through and they're looking for their art. They want to see if their, if their art teacher has submitted. So I think that's a real powerful exhibition. And we appreciate the people that have coordinated that in the past. Um, Scholastic is available to our high school people. Angie Fisher runs that in Omaha. And then Youth Art Month, um, that's always, of course, a wonderful celebration in March. Uh, we always hold it here at Lincoln at the Capitol, and um, members and non-members can participate in that one. So we encourage art educators from the state to submit two pieces and, uh, and really be part of that advocacy effort. Um, Rebecca wrote in the chat, there are all kinds of white papers or a collection of essays on different topics. Advocacy shown here. I read all of the NA assessment white papers this summer. You read all of them, very nice. Wow, that's impressive. Good, you're one step ahead of me on that one. So yes. good, good for you to keep yourself uh, engaged and, and knowledgeable about what it is that uh, that's on those. Oh, they were part of it. <laughs> but that's still good. That's still good. That's uh, as the learning director, that's pretty impressive. So good for you, good for you. We'll come to you as the expert to ask you if we have questions, right? <laughs> oh, we can find the answers if we need to. And then, as I mentioned before, this idea of collaboration, the platforms and position statements, um, these have been collected over the last 12 years. It's part of Delegates Assembly that is held every um, spring at National Convention. Um, these come up for periodic review every three to five years. Um, there are new position statements. In fact, right now, um, the committee is looking at one on trauma and one at, on multiple resources when writing um, units of study for, for students, for learners. So uh, we will continue this work and Josie and Jody will be part of Delegates Assembly um, when we convene in Minneapolis this next March. Uh, part of the community when you're an advocator, um, the advocacy toolbox, which we already kind of shared and you can get to that 
um, through the Nebraska Art Educators page. That's uh, right on there. Or you can go right to arteducators.org. We have links to both of those. So that tool, that, that tool is always there for you. And then it's always an exciting time uh, around the country, which is Arts and Education Week, which is in September. And also there is information on that as well. And so you can see right here, it's the week of September 8th through the 14th, 2019. And you can certainly um, use that as an um, advocacy tool to really point out the importance of um, arts in all of our schools across the nation. They even have dates projected into 2020 and 2021. So all those different tools, all those things that you can use to advocate for your um, program as part of a community are there and available for you to um, explore and to use. Our final one is leader, which I know you both um, are and continue to be. Um, and the first area is communication. Um, you know, our Facebook pages are active and, and very proud of the work that happens on those. Um, we actually have two different Facebook uh, places now, and there's actually three. There's one for students, uh, student chapter. Um, but uh, the first one is the Facebook group which is more informal and interactive. So that's the one that where, where you probably see me posting at four o'clock in the morning on a Sunday morning, a, a cute thing that I find because I can't sleep, right? <laughs> I don't ever see me able to sleep. So that's the one where people can go in and interact. But the page, which is new, which we just implemented this, uh, this summer, is the more formal voice of NATA. So it's the one that has um, uh, more announcements um, related to all the different NATA happenings and, and things that are going on. And then, as I mentioned, there is a student chapter when I'm not sure it's going to continue. It doesn't have very many members, and the ones that are members are kind of all um, adults teaching in schools now, so it's not really many students. So we're looking at whether or not that one has vitality anymore and if we're going to continue even having that one anymore. For NAEA, if you haven't participated yet, um, I'd recommend you joining Collaborate, which is a member benefit. So let me click on here. I may have to log in. We'll see. Okay. If um, but uh, are either of you on Collaborate? I'm not. Nope. Okay. Um, uh, it's, uh, it, it's free to members. And so you just can uh, go in and put in Collaborate in the search box. It will take you to the Cla Collaborate page. Let me see if I'm going to be able to sign in or not. Oh, good. It saved my web, my password. Because if I had to think of my password right now, just... <laughs> um, so if you go here and I click on community design, I look at all communities. And as I scroll down, you're gonna see that there's a community based on advocacy. And currently there's 40 discussions, 91 members part of the group. So you join the communities you're interested in. There's one on technology, design, early childhood. There's the elementary one for, for those of us that do elementary, higher ed. Um, interest group leaders. That's a brand new one that just came on board for anybody who is a leader of the different interest group. Jobs, middle level, museum, national convention. See, the list goes on and on. Open Forum, of course, has the most, 17,000 members and the most discussions because it's the one that's going to be broadly covering all the different topics and different ideas. And so think of this as kind of like social media for NAEA. It's our way of uh, providing an opportunity, uh, a think tank where people can go and share. So then if you look here, I, if I click on here and I click on my communities, I don't join every single one of them. I only join the ones that I really have a, a vested interest in like advocacy, elementary, interest group leaders. I think I got placed on that one because I'm a VP. Middle level, national convention, open forum, pre-service, research commission, secondary and state leaders. So. You can pick and choose, you can be part of discussions, you can set up your settings so that you get uh, notifications when things are added to those different discussions. So, um, and you, but you can also set it so it doesn't do that and you can just go in and check it periodically if you want to do that. So I'd highly recommend because um, even though many of us love Facebook and, and appreciate those discussions, those have a different feel um, because uh, it's just a different group of art teachers, maybe. These are all members of NAEA, which I think has a different level of professionalism, a little different vent on what it is that maybe they bring to the table and, and they share. So feel free to kind of invest in and take a look at Collaborate if that seems to meet your need, because uh, it's, a, it's a member benefit. We'd love for you to you know, participate in that and, and be part of it. Uh, collaborate as a leader. 
um, you know, under NATA and NAEA, you have voices in what it is that, uh, that we do. And remember, you have different vantage points to get into these leader positions. So for example, um, both NATA and NAEA have a three-level president system, which is your current, your elect, and your past. And so you can turn to any of those people. Um, you have executive councils for both, which involve our ESUs and our divisions for NATA, um, as well as the regions and the division directors for NAEA. And of course, you can collaborate and be part of a leader through our elections. And I know both of you have participated in uh, different elections, different appointments over your time. So I think becoming part, an active leader and collaborating with other leaders is a really viable thing for us to uh, be able to participate in and be active in. Um, Rebecca added, it's nice you can focus on the topics you care more about through the NAEA collaboration. Exactly, that's how it was built, right? For mm -hmm. you to be able to go in and really join those conversations that mean the most to you. Uh, community, um, you know, volunteer. I mean, that's a huge piece of being a leader is stepping up and saying, how can I help? What can I do? But then also prioritizing um, what you can and cannot do. Uh, Lauren and I just submitted an article to Julie for the next NATA perspective about prioritizing your life, personal, professional, as well as being a volunteer for organizations, right? Can't do it all. We can't be everything to everyone. So where do you land and where can you best support people uh, and an organization when you decide to volunteer? And then both organizations do a great job of recognizing people for the great work that they do. Deb, I know you've won a couple of awards over the years. I've won a couple of things. I'm not sure, Rebecca, if you've been, you've been in leadership. One, okay, good. So Rebecca's been, um, yes, good. She's been recognized for the great work that she's done. And I'm sure there's more to come. I'm sure there is. You, you're doing great stuff. Um, but nominating people and then accepting those awards are a really great thing as being part of the community and being a leader. So um, I, think they're, I, think the lead, I think the award winners have been notified is what I was told, but I haven't. Lauren and I are, uh, nominated a lot of people this year, so we're hoping the people we nominated came through and won. So uh, we'll see how that goes. Um, dues agreement. Um, NAEA, we, um, NATA is connected to NAEA through a dues agreement. Um, so because of that, when you join NATA, you actually join both organizations for the $80 annually, and that is a full-time teacher. As you know, there are breakdowns from there all the way down to, I think, $40 for students, something like that. Um, because we have that dues agreement, <laughs> NAEA receives um, uh, like member benefits, for example, um, being part of Collaborate, being able to look at the webinars through the archives. Um, NAEA also provides for us um, all of our statistics every month about who are members, the breakdown of who those members are, their emails. So there's a lot of things that NAEA, NAEA does on the backside to help support their states who have a dues agreement with them. And out of uh, 50 states, there are about 10 that do not have dues agreements. So a good example is Texas. Texas does not have a dues agreement. So in order to belong to both organizations, you have to pay a certain amount to TAEA and NAEA. So as you can guess, TAEA, if they're charging $80 a year, they're getting you know, a lot of money. And think of the size of Texas, right? The number of members they have. So they have a huge organization down there. A few people join NAEA from Texas as well, but most of the people join their state organization. So, so there's two, you know, there's ways to look at that. Um, I'm very happy that NATA is a dues agreement with NAEA because of um, all the benefits that um, NAEA do provide us as um, ongoing uh, agreement with them. Um, and as I mentioned, reduce fees for other members like retirees and pre-service. Um, paying for the membership. I know that's an issue for some people, right? Sometimes people pay it out of pocket. Some people do it through uh, their employer. Um, uh, we through Lincoln Public Schools can do it through uh, some uh, monies that are given to us to help pay for uh, different things. So we can actually use that money as part of our membership if we choose to. Um, if you're a non-member, um, most of the time we have a, a chance where you can join uh, NATA um, through your fall conference registration and then a district will pay for that kind of thing. And then there's fundraising opportunities out there. I know Artsonia allows you to the money that you raise in order to put it towards your membership. So I think sometimes you just have to be creative and think about how can I get this paid, uh, this $80 every year. And, and we hope that you're finding uh, benefits to being a member and having that $80 um, annually come out of your paycheck or out of 
out of your funds. Um, we do also have lots of member benefits that are listed here. You can see the list is, is pretty extensive. We try to break it down, NAEA, NATA, so it'll be continue to be part of this webinar, um, but I can also make it available to people. And we do include this uh, when people are renewing their memberships. So uh, Becky Marine and I, who are co-chairs for membership, make sure that people see this so they can see the extensive list of what people do uh, do get when they are members of NATA and NAEA. So we're coming towards the end. We like to give time for questions or thoughts. So how is it that either NAEA and NATA currently support you, or are there things that we can be doing to better support you as an educator and a leader for our organizations? Deb, any thoughts? Is there anything that we can be doing differently or things you like that we do? Um, I like, I like everything. Everyone works so hard. Um, and so I can't think of any ways to improve that. I do know that um, just from looking, it's been a while since I went to the national site. So just from you showing that, there's new things I didn't realize before. So yeah, that's one of the first things I'll do. So that's my main thing I think I got out of tonight. Good. Let's get back on that. <laughs> Yeah, and like I said, there's so much there. So yeah, I think you just take a, bite off a little piece of it, right? And uh, you know, search it when you have time. Rebecca, feel free to type your ideas in if you have some thoughts, and if not, that, that's okay too. Um, you know, Deb, and and I know you did an amazing job in 2016 with our conference out there in McCook. And well, uh, some of it was amazing. There was other issues, but. Yeah, um, <laughs> And there are things with conferences and that and that is the hard part about bringing the conference out to the west end of the state but we need to do that periodically to really show um that nat is statewide it's not just the east side of the state or and the central part of the state it, it involves all of us and so we i think it's important to do that and i know we had we had just maybe even just a couple new members simply because it was out here and they're out here and uh so that, you know, I guess that was worth it. <laughs> it was. Yeah, there's no doubts. Good. Well, and then, you know, and I think we're doing a pretty good job of hopping around the state for the most part. You know, we came back to Lincoln after McCook. Then we came back out to Kearney. Now we're mm -hmm. going to Nebraska City, and then we'll go back up to Omaha. I'm trying to convince Carolyn Albright up in Wayne State to uh, throw her hat in the ring at some point again when she's feeling comfortable because we haven't been there since 2013. Mm -hmm. so it's going to be really incredible to get back up to Wayne State again because I know a lot has changed in uh, – you know, the six years that we've been there. Rebecca, thanks for sharing your thoughts. She wrote, time is an obstacle for many, therefore providing convenience through online resources and this webinar, et cetera, helps people get support without taking a huge chunk of time to do so. Couldn't agree more. Couldn't agree more. I agree. Time is a major issue. Yeah, yeah. Especially when school starts, as we all know. Yes. Imagine if the three of us had decided we were all gonna drive and have this meeting together the time commitment that would have been. But by mm -hmm. sitting here and doing this, we have spent 43 minutes together. And once we get off here, we can go on with our lives. And, and so having this Zoom webinar opportunity and other online things are incredibly valuable. So thank you for that. I agree. I think that's really, really important. Deb, Rebecca, anything else before I make some closing comments? No, um, I'm sure I'll have questions later. Yeah. You know, we're always here for, uh, we're always here for you to support you. And you're very welcome, Rebecca. It was my pleasure to kind of kick us off on this pilot. And I think it'll be important, um, you as the leader, Rebecca, of these, and me as the first pilot, and Deb having experienced it, let's make sure we give feedback to Josie and Jody about what this felt like and, and thoughts about the next two and, and maybe ways that it can either be improved or changed to have it be even a better experience for people as they join us, so. Let me share a couple more things, then we'll get you on to your evening. I hope tonight that you were able to know that you are a, a professional advocator and a leader in art education, that you understand how um, you are impacted by communication, collaboration, and community. And I'm hoping that we can continue to support you as members and leaders um, of both NAEA, NAEA and NATA. Um, I did this when we were at our meeting, and Rebecca did this as well. We were asked, why do we belong to NATA, NATA and NAEA? So this is what I wrote kind of a longer than just one word or phrase. I said, why? We need a citizenry that can think, plan, do, cope, and revise in order to have a successful society. How do we do that? Who better to help achieve this than art educators who are well-trained and connected? What? 
NAEA and ATA provides the best collaboration and learning opportunities for art educators in the state, country, and around the world. So whenever you are asked why, it's so important that we share, instead of jumping right away to the end, why do we belong to an organization, we start with the why at the top. What is the bigger idea? Because people are willing to participate, people are willing to join, people are willing to be involved. If your why is because we're trying to improve society, right? And how do we do that? And what, what do we do to get to there are, are ways that we can do that. So that was just my vantage point. I just wanted to share that with you as, uh, as kind of a closing piece. Don't forget, we have more webinars. As I mentioned before, Tyler's is coming up in September. Deb, we wish you well in January. I know you're going to do a great job. And how fun it will be to be in your classroom. Yeah, I'll have to make sure to clean a little because <laughs> it's usually a disaster. Yeah, but that means kids are learning, right? Yeah, well, you know, if you ask second graders to clean, it just it's worse, you know? Understood. I, they I, try, I, though. They really I, do try. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be great. I think it's going to probably really do a nice job of demonstrating what it is you do with kids every day. So I'm, I'm glad glad to participate in and, and watch you as you're in your classroom and learn from you as well. So, so anyway, to end it, I hope that you're walking away um, knowing a little more about what NATA and NEA can do for you. And if there's any questions, you both know how to get a hold of me. Um, there's my Gmail at the bottom, but you can also contact me through LPS. Um, you can contact me on the Facebook page, whatever. If there's anything I can ever help you with, you just got to let me know. All right. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful night and a good start to the new school year. All right. You too. And you too, Rebecca. Bye-bye. Yeah. We'll see you in Nebraska City. Yep. All right. Good night.